Naming alcohol is going to be the topic of this first lesson in a chapter on alcoholism. You're going to find out that the vast majority of the chapters in second semester organic chemistry will focus on a single functional group or a set of related functional groups. And a uh, typical pattern emerges. You're going to learn how to name them. You're going to learn maybe some physical properties about that functional group. And then you're going to learn how to synthesize that functional group, reactions that create that functional group, that produce that functional group, and then all the reactions of that functional group, the reactions where it's reactant and what you can convert it into. And that's the typical pattern. And we'll follow that exact pattern here, starting with the name of alcohols. We'll learn how to name standard uh, linear alcohols, cyclic alcohols. We'll learn how to name where you've got multiple alcohols, and then we'll find out what you do when the alcohol is not your highest priority functional group. Now this lesson is part of my new organic chemistry playlist, and if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so naming alcohols, and you got two major scenarios. Either the alcohol is the highest priority functional group in your molecule, in which case it'll be named using a suffix on the parent chain at the very end of the name, or it's not gonna be the highest priority functional group, in which case it'll be named as a substituent with a prefix at the beginning of the name. All right, the problem with this though is that so far up till now, as we're learning different functional groups, so far the alcohol is the highest priority functional group. So the likelihood of you seeing it not being the highest up till now is not very great. So uh, that's why I'm not, instead of having you name one, I'm just going to give you an example. So this right here is 4 hydroxybutanoic acid, and carboxylic acid is the top dog, highest priority functional group you guys will learn. So uh, when you name a carboxylic acid here, it gets carbon number one. And we can see there why for the, uh, the hydroxyl group of the alcohol here is attached at carbon four. And when it's not the highest priority group, as is the case here, you just name it as a substituent at the beginning of the name before the parent chain. And so our parent chain of four carbon carboxylic acid, it turns out is butanoic acid. And we just name that again, that hydroxyl group. We can call it not hydroxyl, but hydroxy in the IUPAC name. And so this is four hydroxy butanoic acid. And like I said, the likelihood of you seeing one of these now, probably not so great great since it's, you know, the alcohol is the highest priority function group we've learned up till now, but just preparing you for the future here. So let's look at the rest of the alcohols here. We'll start with just kind of your linear alcohols, and then we'll move on to cyclic ones and see uh, a minor difference there. Uh, if you look at this one right here, so first thing you want to do is find the longest continuous carbon chain the OH is attached to, and then number it to give the OH the lowest possible number. And so in this case, we got a four carbon chain, and we'll number it from right to left. And in this case, the OH is attached at carbon number one. And in this case, though, with a linear alcohol, it doesn't have to be located at position one. It just happens to in this case. And that's a, a big point of, of uh, confusion for students because we'll find out with a cyclic alcohol, if you're naming it as a cyclic alcohol, as the highest priority function group, then the OH will be attached at position one by default. And we'll find out that in such cases, we don't include the one. But on a linear alcohol, you've got to include that one in the name, as we'll find out. So in this case, uh, four carbon chain is butane, and the suffix we're going to use is all. So this is butanol, but you've got to tell me where that uh, OH is located. So this is butan and right before we say the all that's where the one goes so this is butan one all one way to do it so if the alcohol is the only functional group that's part of the parent chain so no alkenes or alkynes in there as well notice there's such things as like butenol and butynol if you have an alkene or alkyne as well so in this case it's the only one then you can also put this one out before the parent chain so we could also call this one butanol. So the top one is kind of the preferred latest and greatest IUPAC rule. So, but you'll see this accepted pretty universally as well. All right. So instead of just having a plain old alcohol, let's put a substituent on there as well. And so in this case, longest continuous carbon chain, the OH is attached to is six carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And in this case, we'll number it right to left as well to make the OH on the lower number. So six carbons is hexane, and the suffix in this case would be all, so hexane all for alcohol. Uh, and in this case, we also have a substituent not attached to the main chain, and we always name those substituents first. And so in this case, we'll start off with that methyl, so two methyl, and then hexanol. But once again, before you say all, you better tell me where it's located on the parent chain. And it's located attached to carbon 2. So this is 2-methylhexane-2-all. Or once again, you could say 2-methyl-2-hexanol. And you could put that 2 out in front of the parent chain, as long as, again, the alcohol is the only uh, functional group that's named as part of that parent chain, as is the case here. 
Okay, so let's move on to cyclic alcohols. And with a cyclic alcohol, so as long as you're naming the alcohol as part of the parent chain because it's the highest priority functional group, so then you're not going to include its location. It'll have to be located at position one by default on a ring. And whether or not you, you know, number around clockwise or counterclockwise, well, if there's no other substituents, it's arbitrary. But if you did have other substituents on your ring, you'd number around in such a way, either clockwise or counterclockwise, to encounter them with lower possible numbers. But you definitely start with the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group as carbon number one here. So in this case, the parent chain is just cyclohexane. And so this is simply cyclohexanol. And again, we don't include the one here. It's not one cyclohexanol or cyclohexan one all. So you omit the one on the cyclic. And again, a lot of students after doing this, go back to the linear ones. are like, I don't have to include the one here, do I? Yes, on the linear ones, you have to. The OH doesn't necessarily have to be at the end of the chain. And so you definitely have to include the one on linear ones. It's just on the cyclic here that we leave or omit the one out of the name. All right, so let's put some substituents on there. And this one, again, you'd definitely define that as position one where the OH is attached. And, and in this case, whether I go around clockwise or counterclockwise, this is gonna be carbon number four, where these two methyl groups are attached either way. And then we've got another methyl group attached at position one. And so in this case, again, this is gonna be cyclohexanol as the parent chain. And then we've got these three methyl substituents. So we'll have one comma four comma four trimethyl. And then the parent chain cyclohexanol. And again, no one as part of that parent chain because it would be there by default when we're naming it as part of the parent chain on a, on a ring. All right, finally, we've got one example of what we call a diol. If you have two hydrox groups on your molecule, it's a diol. If you have three, it's a triol, and that'll get incorporated into the name here. So longest carbon chain in this case is the whole thing, which is three carbons. And whether I go left to right or right to left is not gonna make a difference here. This thing is symmetrical. And the hydrox groups are attached at positions one and three. So a three carbon chain is called propane. And instead of saying propanol, we're gonna say propane diol. So, and because propanol, we usually omit the E, right? We don't want that vowel-vowel -vowel sound, but propane diol, the D is a consonant, so we don't have a vowel-vowel -vowel sound problem, so we're gonna keep that E this time. And before we say diol, we'll talk about, uh, we'll give the chain locators for where the OHs are located. So propane one comma three diol. So, and once again, the hydrox groups uh, are located at positions one and three, and it's the only, the alcohols are the only major function group that are part of the parent chain. And so in this case, you could put that one and three out front as well. And so this could be one, three, propane diol. Cool, and we've kind of covered a, a fairly representative example of any of the kinds of alcohols you're likely to encounter. If you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the more helpful things you can do to help support the channel. If you've got questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems, final exam review, anything of that sort, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.